Welcome back to Flow's Sports Fix, and I'm now joined by one of the other guys, one of the other gurus from the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and it is the stat man. G'day, Jace. How are you today? Clayton, great to be with you on uh, this, the inaugural episode of the Sporting Fix. Yeah, we've cut the ribbon, we've uh, spilt the beer, we've done it all. It's all happened. Excellent. Uh, we might have a Guinness to celebrate later on, but that's a topic for uh, future Jason to worry about. <laughs> Current Jason is worried about the, the AFL and the trial games that were played across the weekend. There were plenty of them around the competition, Clayton. Yeah, I was seeing them. Uh, how did our teams go? Did we have a win? Well, uh, it's fun. It's a funny situation at the moment. COVID has sort of restricted travel, so we know yeah. that. Um, normally, we'd have two rounds of the proper pre-season competition and we'd be out in regional areas. It's not the case at the moment, so there were a lot of derbies, a lot of showdowns, a lot yeah. of queue clashes and whatnot over the weekend, practice games. For example, at Albert and Port Adelaide played the Crows, not just in an AFL trial game, but the two SANFL outfits oh, okay. went against each other yep. as well. So we'll get to that uh, a little bit later on. First of all, though, let's go in order and we'll take a look at the Brisbane Gold Coast trial game. I'm not going to worry too much about the scores in these games, but uh, 47 points the win for the, the Brisbane Lions in the end and some really good performances from some of their recruits. In particular, Joe Danaher made oh, a fairly okay, emphatic yes. statement for the Lions and if he gets up and about, they're going to be tough to toss. Um, so he booted four goals, three, if you don't mind, for yeah. the day. So seven scoring shots, Um yeah, very, very good. So uh, I think he's one to watch. Obviously, Lockie Neal's a star. We know that. And he continued on his good form. So uh, the Suns have got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Ballard was pretty good for them. Watch out for uh, Caden Coleman. If you're into your dream team, I would get him <laughs> in. I think he's going to get picked in round one. So it okay. was pretty good for them. Yes, I heard you guys talking about your dream team selections and all that the other day. Yes, and we'll have a bit more of a look at it in the future. Matt Rowe, of course, as well, yeah. is back, and he looked good. Over in the West, it was West Coast versus Fremantle, and ironically, it was Fremantle. 47-point winners over the Coasters. Yeah. So That five looked pretty good in some of the footage that I saw, too. Looked exceptionally mm. good and appeared to spend... A lot less time in the forward 50. So I think they're going to get him around the ball again, and they need to. Yeah, uh, That's the right option for them. Michael Waters was pretty good. He kicked a handful for them. Andy Brayshaw and Hayden Young were also very yeah. good. Uh, for the Eagles, it was the usual suspects, and this would be the problem for them. This would be a concern early. Shuey, Gaff, Cripps, they were pretty good. Liam Ryan was very good, but he was almost a lone hand up forward. Yeah. So uh, they've got some work to do. And Nick Nat Nui. Didn't play for the Eagles. Watch this space on oh. Nick Nat. He's uh, in a bit of strife early doors, I think. Um, this is a strange one. The Sydney Swans and GWS played out a draw in a trial game. Yep, played out a draw. So How do they manage that? Well, they had equal scores at the end of the game. Clayton, that's that's normally how it happens. You draw. wouldn't think that would happen in a trial game. Well, uh, it, it did in this yeah, occasion. Does, so. Yeah. Callum Mills is up in the midfield for the Swans, so our very own Dan Crouch from Flow News 24 will be pleased to hear that. He's been trying to get him in the midfield for a couple of years now. Uh, Tom Papley up forward was dangerous, and for the Giants, Josh Kelly looks like he's hit the ground running. Tanner Brunn is one a name to watch out for. Uh, with all of their losses, he's going to get some midfield time this year, and looks like he's going to be the straight replacement for Jackson Haightley, who's gone to the okay. Crows. Um, and Haightley was tipped as the next big thing in the Giants midfield. Well, now it looks like it's Tanner Brun, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, the showdown in Adelaide. Now, I mentioned it off the top. Port Adelaide took on the Crows at Alberton, and uh, Port Adelaide's much-vaunted depth came to the the, uh, the picture here. They won by 52 points in the end. Pretty even first and last quarters. Port Adelaide got hold of the Crows in the second and the third quarters. Um, Charlie Dixon was outstanding. Uh, Dersmer, I watched a bit of this. He was very good. Huge news for the Crows, though. Wayne Miller, a serious mm. knee injury. Um, I think he's gone. Uh, Patella tendon snapped. He's already had surgery, and uh, he's got a... Um, so when you say gone, you mean for the season or career-wise? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure about the patella tendon and, and yeah. the, the comeback frames from that, but he snapped it, yeah. and he's already had surgery. So he's mm. that's a long-term injury. Yeah. Todd Marshall was ruled out of the game as uh, after the uh, getting a concussion, I believe. Uh, he had a run-in with Rory Sloan during the game, but uh, that was just precautionary. He'll be all right. But the big news for the Crows in the SNFL trial game, 
The Crows actually beat Port Adelaide, surprisingly enough. Mm. And Riley Philthorpe, the number two pick in the draft, booted four goals. I reckon he might just play in the official trial game against Port Adelaide, yep. which happens next week. Okay. Mm. Now, around Melbourne, uh, the AFL scratch matches um, haven't really come to light yet. That's just mm. a look at the interstate ones. Uh, what I do know is that Mason Wood was exceptional for St Kilda against his old mob, North Melbourne, and looks a likely starter in round one. And uh, that's pretty much all we've heard around the traps yep. at this stage from the VFL trial games. But all of the games in Melbourne, we're going to have a closer look at those guys later in the week, yep. uh, the Melbourne-based teams here on the Sporting Fix. That's a look at those interstate derbies that we were talking about, if you yep. will. Um, but the, uh, the Melbourne-based sides are gearing up. They won't travel either, um, nor should they at this point. And we're at less than a month to go until the season kicks off, Clayton. I can't wait. Yeah, I know. I saw the footy tipping form being handed around early, so it's uh, it's right knocking on our doorstep. So I'm sure we'll be talking more about that. Uh, just get your thoughts on uh, the retirement of the legend Bruce McAvaney, Jase. Yeah, uh, this is uh, not really a surprise, uh, I guess. I, I, I'm sort of a little surprised that he's left it until now to make the decision. So... Bruce has got his uh, finger in a lot of pies when it comes to sport. He still yeah. calls the racing, as we know, on Channel 7. He's going to continue on with that. He'll be at the Tokyo Olympics, should it go ahead. And at this point, everything looks like it will go ahead. So um, he is hoping that uh, it's not the last we've heard of Bruce on the mic in all sports. It's obviously not at this mm. point. But uh, he's had leukaemia recently. Yep. Uh, in terms of where he sits, uh, I, I, I'm personally, and this is just personally, not a fan of his calling, uh, Bruce McAvaney, mm. but you can't deny what he's done for the game and uh, his impact. Um, I, I prefer, I'm a Dennis committee man. Uh, yeah, I like the two of them together. I thought they were a great pair together. They seemed to compliment and where the, each one fell down, the other one sort of just naturally picked them up. I thought they were a great duo together. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I'm not sure that Bruce uh, works as well with... Uh, Brian Taylor, perhaps. I think he feels like he's going to carry <laughs> yeah. the can a little bit there with BT. I don't think they work well with Bruce. I think it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, look, uh, at the end of the day, you can't deny what he's done. He's mm. had some iconic calls. Good luck to him. Um, I'm sure he'll be excellent at the Olympic Games. I, yeah. I actually quite like Bruce McAvaney calling Olympic sports yeah. and athletics and whatnot much more than I do him calling the AFL. So... Um, I, I think it's the right move for him. He won't have to travel to Melbourne as much. You can look after mm. his health. And uh, just scaling things back a bit is not necessarily a bad, bad thing. Yeah. It happens. Mm. The legends gradually sort of drift away. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to miss Bruce. I, is there any way – who's a good a commentator of his or Dennis's equal or you could see them becoming onto their level right now? Well, I don't think there's anyone the equal of Dennis Committee. Yeah. Uh, for me, he's always going to be number one. Hamish McLaughlin, obviously, is the heir apparent. Yeah. He'll take over the anchor role, which is the role that Bruce is – I guess, sort of uh, made his own over the last few years. So Hamish McLaughlin's the obvious one. Um, the problem I think we've got in the media these days is um, we don't uh, look at broadcasters in these roles. We look at yeah. ex-players. So mm. uh, as a result, you don't get the anchor man kind of uh, the genuine, um, I guess, doyens that we've had in the past in terms yeah. of game calling that we've seen in the past uh, when it comes to VFL football or AFL football. So um, maybe we'll need to go back to that for a little while. There's mm. a few out there. Jared Waitley might be another one that uh, could come down that path. Yeah. I quite enjoy his calling, but he's a long way off a, a, a Dennis committee or a Bruce McAvaney at the moment. Mm. Uh, Hamish McLaughlin has got some stuff to learn, but he seems to be the man that's been anointed by Channel 7, so we'll see how he goes. We certainly will. All right, thanks, Jason. We'll get you more on the Sports Fix as we go through the week. I'm sure there are other topics we can talk about. There's a couple we, we do want to touch on, but we'll leave that for later in the week. And, of course, we'll catch you Friday night on the Sports Show. And um, it won't be long. We're all talking footy and netball. It's going to be going to be a big season, I feel, this year. It will be. Uh, thank you, Clayton. I've got my sporting fix for the day. Good. Uh, all right. We've got EPL coming up with our world game guru, Alessander. And what's going on with Roger Federer? Courtney's got the latest. We'll find out coming up soon on the Sports Fix.